Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death for women in the U.S. And now there are new guidelines suggesting women should get screened at the age of 40 instead of 50. And these new recommendations from the United States Preventative Task Force stems from studies that showed a 2% increase in the rate of breast cancer in women ages 40 to 49 between 2015 and 2019. So joining me now is a breast radiologist, Dr. Ryan Gabriel with the Sarah Cannon Institute. First, thank you for being here. Well, thanks so much for having me here. I'm really excited. And this is such an important topic for anyone watching at home right now. Mm -hmm. they They've changed the recommendation to 40, but a lot of women might have been already getting screenings at 40, correct? Right. It's a little complicated, um, but the United States Task Force is an individual group that um, decides to make recommendations um, for evidence-based medicine, and um, they have dropped the screening recommendations for beginning at 50 to beginning at 40. And that's really important because a lot of other um, bodies of um, accreditation have said starting at 40 and continuing annually for screening is the most important way to save the most number of lives from breast cancer. So for the government to start accepting 40 as the new start time, that is very important for us. A big step forward. And how has the pandemic affected things? Because I know a lot of people put off their appointments during sure. the pandemic. Are we seeing that pick back up the office visits? We are. We were actually just looking at um, our years back, and this is the third year since the COVID shutdown, and we have been reflecting back, and this is a, a one of the first years that we've seen uh, our screening rates back up to normal rates. So it's been catching back up. That is good news. Mm -hmm. Everyone should go get their screenings every year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's important because they compare. Tell me a little bit about that. They compare year to year. Absolutely. Yes. So um, when I'm looking at a mammogram, I have um, this year's mammogram up, but I'm also looking at the year before, the year before. And so the number of comparisons helps me find subtle changes in the breast tissue because breast cancers, some a lot of them are like slow growing and the denser your breast tissue is, it may be harder to find cancers. And so we're comparing subtle changes in the breast tissue and it might be apparent that year, whereas when we look back, oh, it was very subtle, but now it's, it's evident. And we've been talking about this a lot lately with the dense breast tissue. When you look at it, if someone has extremely dense tissue, it looks white on the imaging mm -hmm. just as a change might look white. Do you ever recommend for some people they get an ultrasound as well. So um, dense breast tissue, it, it has a lot of um, complications to it. So um, I want to start off by saying that dense breast tissue is a normal thing. About 50% of mm -hmm. women have dense breast tissue, and there's nothing that you can do to prevent it. It is just who you are. Um, but it makes it harder to find cancers, and it increases your risk for developing breast cancer. So when I'm looking at a screening mam or a mammogram that, with dense tissue, I have to pay a lot of attention because when you're looking at the breast tissue, it's like a cloudy day when it's it's dense. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to find what is that thundercloud amongst the other clouds that's going to cause the problem. And so um, 3D mammograms help, but there are some other things that can be more beneficial for, for detecting breast cancer in women that have dense breast tissue. And if you ever get a call from an office and they say, come back in, you shouldn't automatically no. be concerned because I know that sparks panic in people when yes. they say, if we call, we might call you. Right. And it, it happens a lot. Um, and about 10% of women that have a uh, mammogram are going to get a callback. And some women have multiple callbacks throughout their screening lifetime. And um, our job is to find really subtle changes, but most of them don't amount to anything concerning. Um, and you just have to remember that we are really trying to be as sensitive as possible to find cancers. And some of those cancers produce very subtle changes. And so that's why we're bringing you back to take a look at the breast tissue more. And most women are let go back to normal screening. Does race and ethnicity play a role here? Should women that are watching right now, black women that are watching right now, know that they need to get another screening or be, be extra cautious? Right. So the interesting thing about um, race is that um, black women do not develop breast cancer um, more often than white women, but black women will um, more likely die from breast cancer compared to white really? women, about 40 percent more than white women. And the reasons behind that are multifactorial, um, socioeconomic disparities. Black women have a higher incidence of um, genetic mutations like BRCA1 and BRCA2, and they have double the risk of developing a very aggressive type of breast cancer called triple negative breast cancer. So we recommend that women start screening at 40 and continuing annually. 
on the Sarah Cannon Cancer website for Henrico Doctors, there's a risk assessment that women can go to and um, put a bunch of information in and it tells them their risk. And they can start doing that at 30 years old to determine do they even need to screen earlier than 40. All right, we want to thank you so much. We could keep going here. I know, we could. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Yes, thank you for being here from the Sarah Cannon Institute and that's going to do it for us.